Let's try and fire it up and see if anything happens. Welcome back, and if you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly recommend it for this jewel of a car. This Mustang Cobra 2 with a 302 4-speed has been sitting for 27 years. Just recently I got it running, Let's go! did the bare minimum to make it roadworthy, then I went on a road trip to drag race this poor car. We managed to break the time this car was originally laying down when brand new back in 1977 with six successful passes completed before we made the journey back home. Unfortunately, I was left stranded on the side of the road a mere 30 minutes away from home. The engine overheated and I have no idea if this poor 302 made it out alive. Stick around to the end to see if this Cobra survives and how we can improve this car even more with a very limited budget. Stop smoking. I think uh, we would have built a manifold gasket or some kind of collector, maybe the donut or something. I don't know if it's like got the the ring on it or whatever. So it still runs. I'm impressed. Uh, I guess what we need to do is pull up to the shop, see if we can fix that gasket. Coolant, definitely number one. Number two, fix wherever that exhaust leak is coming from. Number three, I don't know, but we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna spray all these bolts down because I know for a fact they don't wanna give up without a fight. Now might be also a good time to uh, change our spark plugs because I never did do that. And the plug wires, never did that either. Well, the gasket looks okay. Hmm. Well, we can replace it. I've got two new ones. Then, if that doesn't fix it, then we'll go down to the uh, the donut gasket for the collector. I hope it's not anything worse. So I made the mistake again on spending more on parts than I paid for the entire car. So since this thing survived all the abuse that I put it through, drag racing and road tripping, I figured, hey. Let's treat it to tearing it all apart and trying to make it run faster and abusing it a little bit more. This is even all the parts that we have on the way. They're still coming in right now. We've got a new cam, new intake for four barrel, new four barrel carburetor. We've got timing chain, gasket sets to put it all back together. The goal is to make this thing more enjoyable and even faster for less than a thousand dollars. And we gotta basically undo all of our hard work in making this car run and drive and uh, redo it. But that's the nature of the game, you know.
looks decent on the inside. Slop is in that chain right there. A lot of timing. See that? Pretty good bit of degrees. Well, after all that work, here's our old cam. I just lined it up with the uh, corresponding lifter on each lobe. Don't know if we'll reuse this cam. I mean, it's just a stock factory 302 broomstick, basically. It's nothing special, but it still looks good, and it could be used, heck, if the, our new cam ends up not being any count. But we've got our new cam. This is a Summit brand cam. I got this cam along with the lifters. They're soaking in oil right now, but you can see this is the uh, number right here. It's the 3601 Summit brand, like I said. Um, advertised duration is 278 and 290, and then duration at 50 is 218 and 228, with a uh, valve lift of 471 on the intake and exhaust side. So it's not a super radical cam, uh, nothing crazy. It should have a little bit of a lope to it, but. Uh, it's pushing up basically at the almost the limit for what a stock engine can really handle as far as it can without upgrading heads or anything like that. So our intake is going to help out a lot with that, that new four barrel carburetor. Uh, this will really wake it up hopefully and that, that the fact that this car has a four speed is going to help us a lot. So it's a good mid-range cam. It's rated at like 1500 to 5500. That's what all this engine is really meant for but this cam is going to be good. But next we've got to finish taking a little bit more things off of here. Got to get this condenser out of the way. It's stuck in there. I did have to pull the grill to get the cam out, but we'll do a little cleaning in here, get all of our gasket surfaces ready to go, and uh, then we will pop in the new cam. We got the cam all lubed up with the uh, assembly lube, break-in lube, and uh, we're slowly going to install this thing back in its place very careful not to make any marks on our cam bearings. Can't even think of the word. If you ever get to where you can't get the cam to move any further, just rotate it a little bit because a lot of times you'll snag it up on a load. Don't. Whatever you do, get in a hurry. pump eccentric goes on I put a little dab of red Loctite on this bolt here because we do not want the cam to back out. Now we can put the lifters in. What I like to do is actually uh, let these things soak overnight in some oil and that's what they did and I take and wipe the actual surface where it's going to be touching the lobe of the cam and wipe it clean. Get all the oil off of it that I can and then add the assembly lube. The reason I do that is because this stuff sticks a heck of a lot nicer to something that doesn't have oil with it. Spread that around, make sure it coats the very end of it, maybe put a little bit on the, the lifter bore surface as well. And now this thing will be full of oil, that way we don't have to wait for our lifters to pump up for anything to work. Drop it down into place. And push rod time. And while I was at it, I took the opportunity and sprayed a little bit of brake cleaner in each one just to make sure that there were no obstructions. 
because these are not like a Chrysler. They oil through the push rod. Well, basically just every other thing in the world oils through the push rod, unlike Chrysler, but there we go. Now what's critical in a cam break-in is proper oil lubrication. Now we did add break-in lube to each lobe and each lifter on the cam, but that still is not as much as I would like to have. Now the best thing to do is definitely start this thing up with the oil system primed. We're gonna add a zinc additive in with our VR1 Valvoline oil that's supposed to have high zinc content, and then prime the entire system, check for oil pressure, and then that will ensure that we have oil in our lifters already, they're pumped up, we've got oil already through our push rods and up into our rockers, because those couple of seconds when there's no oil circulating are crucial in the cam braking, and everything that we can do to make sure this cam doesn't wipe a lobe is gonna help us in the long run. Now we'll take our quarter inch socket with an impact and a little bit of duct tape to make sure it doesn't fall off and run it counterclockwise and that'll engage the oil pump. You'll start hearing air start moving and circulating because it's purging the system and getting oil up to these lifters. Now we're starting to see oil come out of our rocker arms and through the push rods. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that every single one of these is actually getting oil through it. You'll notice here, watch my gauge. And this is what we want to see. Oil coming out of every single rocker, coming through every single push rod. Because that makes me feel a heck of a lot better now that I know this thing's gonna have oil already up to it when we fire it off. All right, it is time for our intake. This is just a knockoff Edelbrock. Uh, it's some no-name that I bought off Amazon for like 160 bucks. It's really cheap. Went and got me some uh, plugs for the uh, thermostat housing right here, and I'm not gonna run the heater on this thing, so I just plugged it. Got a plug here, got a plug in the back, and I rigged up a manual temperature sender right here for this gauge. And then we'll relocate it when the car is actually good and running. But what I want to do is uh, actually block off these right here, these heat crossovers. See that? What happens is, is exhaust gas comes is reverted back up through the bottom of the intake and comes out on the other side. I'm going to block this off on the intake. And what I've done is made these out of a license plate. Now what it'll do is just chill out right there. Pretty simple, huh? In a cold start situation, this atomizes the fuel better, gets it warm. I don't really live in a cold area. It's not cold that often, so we're gonna block this off and keep from vapor lock, basically. This will help in the long run. Intake incoming. Well, I pulled out the thermostat housing and I noticed that the uh, thermostat has actually been cut open. So there's nothing going on as far as a thermostat goes. So as soon as this thing cranks up, water starts flowing. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we're gonna put a new one on it and hope for the best. We'll put all this, everything back together, get our coolant system filled up. Something that is crucial whenever it comes to breaking in any kind of internal parts is making sure that the timing is correct. Now when I took this thing apart, I noted where number one was, and it just so happens that on my distributor cap, it does tell me which one is supposed to be number one. And it was pointed right here, so whenever I uh, shut the engine off or at least tore it apart, I made sure it was pointing at number one before I pulled anything apart. And whenever I started to assemble everything, I put it back at top dead center. So I know that my dots are lined up, I haven't rotated the engine any, and I've got my distributor pointing right at number one. So whenever I put my cap on, it should line up in that exact place. And there's one that right here that is actually cast into the cap. So when I set it on, and everything lines up, there's my number one. So for carburetor's sake, I put a Demon carburetor on here. I don't really care for these. 
mainly just because of the uh, tunability aspect. They're kind of like a, hey, I've got a basic bone stock Chevy 350 and I want to bolt something on and make it run. This will do that trick. I mean, they do have some tunability aspects to it, but uh, I don't really care for them. I just bolted it on here because I know for a fact that it runs. It works. I had it on a running vehicle. And whenever I'm breaking in something like this, I want to eliminate any kind of possibility for failure that I can. And I know for a fact my carburetor is good. I do have a better carburetor that I'm going to put on after the break in and make sure that everything goes swell. Um, and at that point, we will, you know, do the tuning that we need to. But this is just for the initial break in, period. Okay, the time has come. We are ready. I have put fuel in each of the bowls on the carburetor and it is squirting fuel. We've got a battery in, we've got it filled up with water. We've got both of our gauges sitting here for oil pressure and temp. And on top of that, I've got this giant fan here to simulate airflow moving through the radiator. Uh, I'm gonna leave the cap off until we see the uh, thermostat open up and then add more water as we need to. But the plan is, as soon as this thing fires off and runs, we need to basically up the RPMs to like 1500, 2500 RPM to uh, make sure that we're varying the RPM to splash oil at different lobes of the cam. I'm gonna take the idle screw and crank it up to, for about 25, 30 minutes, and just simulate uh, RPMs fluctuating and changing, and we will go from there. So let's hope that this thing works.
So we dodged a bullet that can break in when it's successful as far as I can tell. Uh, we've got quite the massive exhaust leak and that made me nervous for like the first five or ten minutes because I thought that it was a lifter that decided to basically wipe itself. But thankfully it turned out it was just that giant exhaust leak. It's got like a hole that big in the gasket so we're okay there. But anyway, what I want to do is get rid of that demon carburetor and substitute it with this. This is a quick fuel slayer. It's a 600 CFM vacuum secondary carburetor. I bought this used for like 90 bucks and I've had this thing for probably three years now and I've never put it on anything. But I want to test it out today. I've always liked these quick fuel carburetors. I mean it's basically a holly with some pretty trick parts to it. And I've unbolted the bowl just to see how things look on the inside. Because I was kind of worried, you know, when you buy stuff like this used, you always wonder, you know, is there a possibility this thing is going to be junk? Is there something wrong with it? Like, what caused them to take this thing off of a running car? And I talked to the guy and he said, oh yeah, it was on my small block Chevy and this thing ran great. It just was hard to start because I took the choke off, as you can see. And it literally looks brand new on the inside. I think I'm stupid. I got in a hurry. I filled the bowls up and I didn't even put the fuel line on. I just stuck it over here. What is wrong with me? Oh man. I swear, sometimes I just get in a hurry and it never helps. Never helps. And that choke isn't working, but fired right up. Amount of gauges for driving. See our temperature and our oil pressure. That's pretty good. Let it warm up and we'll take it for a drive. Now, this right here is a four lug 15 by 9. I don't even remember what brand there's some generic brand but they look really good they kind of give it that the vintage uh, trans am cars and i kind of like that look so i kind of wanted to do that with this car the only problem is is that these tires are stretched you know they got the the stance deal going on these are like this is a 15 by 9 with a 195 50 on it so that tire is beyond the outer limits that it is capable of doing so i bought these these are a 250, uh, 225.50, and you can see it's taller, it's wider, and it'll give that Trans Am vibe without having to stretch our tires. So I wanted to swap out these, put these wheels on it. Uh, I bought these from uh, Built Official on YouTube, if you guys have a chance to check him out. Pretty cool guy, um, really knowledgeable about this stuff, about wheel specs and everything. But, uh, they look absolutely sick, especially with how, how deep of a wheel lip that is. So I'm going to knock these tires off, put these on it, trade everything around and see how it looks. I'd be amazed if these tires didn't de-bead as soon as I let all the air out of them. But let's find out. I'm going to take a step back. That was impressive. You could literally see the sidewall stop swelling out. Okay, I'm going to be very careful with these. Got them off the beat and you can really tell how much of a stretch these tires were. Like, that's a lot right there.
Now, as much as it pains me to remove my custom exhaust here that we did in the last video, I've got something a little bit nicer in store that I hope you guys enjoy. Now. Old Farrah is loaded up on the trailer, headed up to the exhaust shop at Sammy's. We're going to put these Flowmaster Flow FX mufflers on here. Now, these suckers are pretty loud. They sound awesome, and they're straight through, as you can see. I mean, those are not going to quiet it down a whole lot, but it does sound really good. I have a set of these on my Challenger, except they're the oval-shaped ones, and they're kind of offset to one side. They sound really good. Now, I want to kind of do something off to the side exit maybe because it kind of goes with the look of the wheels, like with the Trans Am kind of style. If not, we may run them out the back if it's easier and run them right out here next to the gas tank, put two exhaust tips right here like the factory did. But it'll be two mufflers through the whole thing. I've got two Flowmaster mufflers. I want dual exhaust all the way out no matter how we end up doing it. But these flow effects, they're like 40 bucks a piece and they're all stainless, but they're, they sound really, really good. But these aren't, I think they're like 16 inches long. So it's kind of like a glass pack, but not really. I mean, it sounds totally different in my opinion than a glass pack, but uh, I cannot wait to hear what these things sound like on this car. Cause we had that one little dinky glass pack, but now that we got a little more power under the hood, need to breathe a little bit better. All right, we are leaving Sammy's. Here's your initial reaction. I had to hop out and put the battery cable back on. Man, this thing sounds tough. Really hear the that little bit of lope from that cam. Man, I like that. Y'all need some exhaust work, check out Sammy's, man. They do very, very good work. They do all my exhaust work on every car I do. I'm getting a lot of wild looks pulling this Mustang around town. I have yet to drive it through the actual town I live in, but it seems like a lot of people are are uh, interested in it. I got a couple honks and a couple thumbs up. So people do like the car. It's pretty neat. Um, basically, I spent 250 bucks on running the exhaust out the side and it was like a little over 40 bucks for each muffler. So that puts us at 330 that we had to pay for the full exhaust system. Now, you know, prices are going to vary whether or not you run them out the back or the side, and, you know, where you buy your mufflers from, which muffler you get, but I, I did spend a little extra. I could have saved some money with running like some like cheaper glass pack. Could have spent like 20 bucks per muffler, but I really like these flow effects mufflers, and if I'm gonna spend the money, I'd rather spend it on something like that.
I gotta be honest, these wheels really make the car. That combined with these obnoxiously loud and obvious side pipes just coming out the exhaust here, I mean, they look amazing. I love the way this car turned out. The stance is perfect. Everything just lined up. I and mean, we had a lot of fun messing with this old car and doing a whole lot of stuff that you know some people may say, hey, that's a little bit crazy, but that's what we like to do. And we had a lot of fun on a budget, and that's what it's all about. I want you guys to take that away from this video that you can have fun while still being on a budget. I don't have a lot of money in this car, and some may say they don't like it, some may say it's awesome, and that's okay. It's all about having fun. I've had a blast working on it, doing things to it, making it what it is, and I'm not gonna say that it's finished. I mean, there's still stuff I wanna do to this car. Still things I wanna button up and make better. But as far as the appearance goes and how it sounds, how it looks, how it performs, I'm very happy with it. And I'm very excited to road trip this thing as is. Take it to some car shows. Use it basically as a truck. I mean, that hatch, when it opens up, there's so much space in the back, especially when you fold the seat down. So I see some road trips in the near future with this car. It's an awesome, fun little driver. It's compact, it's easy to get into, easy to whip around in traffic and everything like that. So I'm very happy with it, and I'm glad that you guys have been along for the ride. So where does that leave old Farrah here? Well, I mean, when we started, this car was a disaster. And I'd say from this point on, we've made it a little bit less than a disaster. I've had a lot of fun working on this car, and there are things that I'm gonna improve on and make better, but that comes with time and enjoying it and driving it and having a lot of fun. So I'm happy to say that this car is gonna join the fleet and be a permanent member. So I wanna see this thing driving on the road and making road trips and car shows all around. Now if you wanna support the channel, it's really simple. All you gotta do is scroll down just a little bit, hit the subscription box, turn on notifications, that way you don't miss more videos like this. Also, if you got a chance, you know, hit the description and uh, get the link below buy a t-shirt you know we, we just dropped this new charger shirt and it's pretty awesome I'm excited about it and I hope you guys are too but if you do want to support the channel it's greatly appreciated but you just being here is plenty and I respect that and I'm glad that you guys are here and I'm happy to continue forward and making this car even better so thanks again I'll see you in the next one